My name is Jeff Gold, and I have the privilege of moderating today. And as you well may know, the League is a nonpartisan educational organization <coughs> with uh, the purpose of bringing high quality information to voters in connection with uh, elections and other events. Uh, the race that we're examining today has three candidates. It is a nonpartisan race. These three candidates will be on the May 20th ballot, on, all, on everyone's ballot. If any should gain 50% plus one of the vote on May 20th, their name will be the only one on the ballot in November. Otherwise, the two top vote getters will have their names on the ballot on November for the runoff. Um, we have prepared some questions for all three candidates. Uh, with the, the help of league members and other citizen input. You have cards where you are uh, invited to submit questions. We may or may not get to them, so that will be an hour, and we're prioritizing the prepared questions, which each candidate will have an opportunity to respond to. We're glad that you're here, um, and we hope this is a useful and informational hour together. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. It's, uh, thanks very much for participating in this forum. Uh, the three, yeah, the, the three candidates for Jackson County Sheriff on the May primary ballot are Corey Falls, who is Lieutenant Chief, uh, Department Deputy Chief of Police uh, for the City of Ashland. Bob Sergey is a uh, Lieutenant with the uh, Sheriff's Department, and Mike Winters is the incumbent Sheriff, the City Sheriff. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We'd like to start with, we'll have a uh, one minute opening statement from each of you, please. And, and we have, we'll be giving you time to use throughout the uh, discussion of uh, 30 seconds and 15 seconds. Um, then we have a series of questions we'd like you to all ask, uh, answer. And we'll, we'll have you answer first in a rotating fashion, which, uh, which we'll, uh, we'll show you in a moment. Um, we're gonna ask for uh, opening statements in alphabetical order. So, um, a Deputy Chief Falls first, a Lieutenant Sergey second, Sheriff Winters third. Uh, the closing statement where we'll ask for a general statement of your reasons for running and your qualifications will be the reverse order of what I just said. So, to get started, please, could we have a one minute opening statement from Deputy Chief Falls? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming and spending your lunch with us today. My name is Corey Falls, and I am running for Jackson County Sheriff. I want to introduce my wife, who's here with me today, uh, Tamara Falls. I'm a guy that grew up, grew up in uh, Jackson County, and I've lived in Jackson County a large portion of my life. And I see running for a sheriff as a call to public service to improve the quality of uh, life in our community. Uh, my 16 years of law enforcement experience are very broad. Currently, I am the Deputy Chief of Police at the Ashland Police Department. I started my career in uh, the state of Washington, and while I was up there, I had the opportunity to work for the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office, which is the third largest sheriff's office in Washington. And then I've built a strong foundation with my education, my professional leadership training in law enforcement to include a master's degree in organizational management, uh, the FBI Academy, and uh, currently working on a doctorate degree in business administration. And with my uh, foundation that I've built and my commitment to Jackson County, I feel very prepared to lead Jackson County into the future. Thank you. Great. And uh, when, you, when your time expires, I'll ask you to finish the sentence you're in and then we'll move on. Uh, Lieutenant Sergey, one, one minute uh, opening, please. It's Sergey. Sergey, I apologize. Uh, quick word about the DOJ investigation. Uh, I expect that to be over by next week, and I'll make a statement then, so I will not address that issue today. Uh, what I do want to talk about is leadership. Uh, leadership takes trust and respect. Uh, recently, the Sheriff's Office Association uh, had took a vote for endorsement. I got 52% of that vote. Winners got 4%. To dismiss that or ignore that is hypocritical at best. Uh, when uh, winners ran against Ed Mayer, uh, he made the statement that to not have to respect or trust his employees, you can't run an agency effectively. Recently, he said, as a CEO, uh, he's not there to be popular. Because of my 34 years in law enforcement and my experience with the Sheriff's Office, I'm the only candidate that can have an immediate impact on the culture of the agency. Uh, I can make effective changes from day one, and the Sheriff's Office uh, 
put the sheriff's office on the right course and make law enforcement uh, its number one priority. Thank you. Sheriff Winters, a one minute opening statement, please. I'm Mike Winters, I'm the uh, current sitting sheriff, have been since uh, 2003. I started as a volunteer firefighter with Fire District 5 uh, early on, got a little bit of emergency uh, service time there. I was a reserve with the city of Ashland for three years, uh, maybe just a little bit less. Worked at eight at night till four in the morning uh, with the city of Ashland. Had a, they had a good reserve program uh, that I was proud to be a part of. Then went to work for the Oregon State Police. Uh, I've been a firearms instructor, a recruit coach, uh, had my own business, uh, signed the front of the check on a lot of occasions, not just the back. And so, uh, you know, for the last 11 years, I've been the sheriff and I brought this, I think the key point is that I brought the uh, Ram Sheriff's Office. It's been on budget uh, for the last 12 years and we haven't come to the taxpayers for one time of additional revenue. Thank you. Thank you. The first question, please, I'll address to Lieutenant Sergi, then Sheriff Winters, then Deputy Chief Falls. Um, Lieutenant Sergi, what do you view as the one or two biggest crime problems facing Jackson County, and how would you address them as sheriff? Uh, crimes against property. This is a two-minute response. Okay, crimes against property and behavioral uh, crimes are in the rise are on the rise in Jackson County as well as the state. Uh, crimes against persons have actually had a downtrend. Um, the significant part about crimes against property is that if we have more deputies on the street, uh, we could perhaps prevent those or at least effectively uh, investigate those type of crimes and has a, have a resolution. And a lot of those crimes are solvable if, the, if we have enough people on the street to, to, to do a proper investigation and uh, make those arrests. Right now, uh, with our uh, depleted patrol, it's, it's going from call to call to call, and the patrol deputies do not have time to investigate uh, those incidents properly. Sheriff Winters, two, two minutes, please, on your view on Jackson County's uh, one or two most serious crime challenges and your approach over the next few, few years, four years, if re-elected. Yeah, the, the drug, uh, the reason the property crimes, uh, you have any rise in that or you're, you're dealing with that is because of the drug problem in Jackson County. And uh, candidly, the drug problem is because of a cultural problem in the United States. Uh, you're you're going to hear different things today about wanting additional patrols and wanting more uh, people in jail and such, but uh, there's only so much money and the jail is only so big. And so you have to be able to balance, uh, and I think you need to look at the sheriff's office as a wheel, and you need to be able to balance uh, that wheel and, and put those resources out. For the cases that we investigate, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office has a 92% clearance rate, which is in the top in the state. So we do a very good job of what we do. A lot of our crime trends are down, and uh, you know I'm going to continue to to keep things balanced and even, and uh, you know bring good law enforcement to Jackson County. Deputy Chief Falls, same question. Top two crime challenges, problems in Jackson County, and your approach to them should you be elected. Two minutes, please. The two crimes that are, <clears throat> excuse me, two crimes that are increasing in, in Jackson County are theft and burglary. They've, got, they've gone up uh, consistently over the last two or three years, and that is part of the uh, drug problem also. Uh, it is related to that. Uh, also, what we're seeing is that something that doesn't get talked about every night on the five o'clock news is an increase in our uh, crime against our vulnerable uh, population, elderly people, financial crimes. Financial crimes are a huge concern. If you've ever had you know, mail stolen from yourselves or your identity taken, uh, that's, a, that's a big problem. And all that relates to drugs, property crimes, and financial crimes. So, so I will lump all those in together. In addition, uh, just an increase in uh, crimes against children and, and, and domestic violence is another problem. Uh, there's a lot of problems in, in, in Jackson County and, and with those problems. Having a professional problem solving strategy to, to address these problems helps your community. And what it does is it helps identify the appropriate resources to put to, to, put, to, to, put to these crimes. You, you, with a limited amount of resources, you have to prioritize where you put uh, your enforcement. 
and you have to identify what your biggest problems are, and then you need to implement strategies to effectively deal with those problems. So as your sheriff, I would certainly implement a professional policing strategy where people are held accountable, where people are designated to different uh, geographical areas of the community that would increase communication and identify problems. Well, let's continue with the resource question. I'm going to ask Sheriff Winters to answer this first, please, in two minutes. Uh, assuming that uh, budget challenge is going to continue, what cuts or changes would you make in resource allocation over the next four years in the Sheriff's Office? Well, our budget for this year is, is good, so we would have to assume that uh, we're going to have a cut. But anything that we do uh, is going to be done in balance. Uh, the one key component of the whole county, though, is the county jail. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, if we get into serious, serious cuts, we're going to maintain the county jail uh, because that's the resource that benefits the most people across the county and the most cities. If you look to our north of the uh, Josephine County, they have uh, cut their jail back substantially. And so the effect is on the residents of the county. They've added additional state police officers over there, and the uh, Grants Pass Department of Public Safety is doing a great job, but they have no place to lodge suspects. And so uh, you have to maintain the jail. If I have to dump all my, if we get those cutbacks, I will maintain the jail. Deputy Chief Falls, what uh, cuts or changes in resource allocation would you make in the Sheriff's budget? The changes in resource allocation that I see affecting the Sheriff's Office right now is, first of all, there's a lot of supervisors that aren't supervising anybody. I think that needs to be, I think that needs to change. Move supervisors that aren't supervising anybody into positions where, where they are supervising people. Another resource I'd like to see changed is we, we have a helicopter program that we spend a lot of time in, outside this county uh, with, with marijuana grows and, and resources and SWAT teams. And when we have, uh, I have the numbers here, when we have over 500 children being abused and found of, of uh, child abuse and all that, I'm not going to send one resource to another county to pull marijuana plants until we can make sure that we have adequate detectives and investigators to investigate crimes against children and women. So that's uh, two of the biggest resource changes that uh, I would see. Uh, Lieutenant Sergi, please, your, your view on prospective cuts, cuts you would consider, changes in resource allocation you consider in the Sheriff's Office? Well, I, I would eliminate uh, the expenditures on unnecessary equipment and services. One of them is the helicopter. Uh, we, when we spend over a million and a half dollars, uh, and that's according to uh, Mike's uh, figures, on a satellite communication system, we're, prop, we're not effectively uh, watching uh, the money for this community. Uh, I do agree with uh, Corey that um, we need to keep our resources within the county um, to effectively uh, prevent crime and have enough patrol people on the road. Uh, it, it's a waste of resources to send them outside the county uh, on a regular basis. Plus, I have a plan for reorganization that would not raise the budget and put more deputies on the street, and I can uh, do that almost immediately. Okay. Now I'm going to ask uh, one more question. This one, uh, Deputy Chief Falls, will answer first, and then we're, I'm going to ask for a round. If any of you, in a, in a minute, would like to respond to anything else you've heard today, just uh, try to get a little interaction going. That would be on any any answer. But the question I want to ask, and uh, Let's, let's take one minute on this, um, Deputy Chief Falls. Among your values as a public official, where would you rank transparency to the public, and what can the public expect from you in that regard if you're sheriff? Transparency is, is a high priority of mine. As I've been out campaigning um, and talking to a lot of people in different groups and, and special interest groups or whatever other organizations, the number one thing they say is they feel within the, the sheriff's office now, and the sheriff is, they're, they're not responsive or available to a lot of their concerns. So certainly having open and honest communication with, with the public would be a big priority of, my, uh, of mine. Being transparent, being an open book would certainly uh, be a big priority of mine. I think it's very important. I think the number one role for a public safety official or a sheriff or a police chief or a police officer 
is to protect the constitutional and civil rights of a citizen, and you, you can't do that uh, behind closed doors. Lieutenant Sergi, where you prioritize transparency and what the public could expect of you as sheriff? I expect to have an open door and open books. Uh, currently, if, if you wanted to speak to uh, winners, if you make it very difficult, I intend to uh, make that communication available to just about anybody that wants to speak to me as the sheriff. I also would uh, have anybody that wants to look at the budget to see where the money's going, they're welcome to come and look at that. That would, be, that would include the commissioners or anybody else on the budget committee. Um, and I think that um, as a whole, this agency has kind of isolated it itself from the communities, and that needs to change. Uh, uh, town hall meetings was an important um, concept that former Bob Kennedy uh, used, and I think that would be an effective tool. Sheriff Winters, would you comment on the importance of transparency and what the public could expect of you in the next four years? <coughs> well, the uh, sheriff's office is transparent. Uh, it's to the best of my knowledge, we don't get a lot of complaints. I think we had uh, 40 officer complaints last year, for example. Uh, you know, the, we don't get a lot of, we have a uh, response system out front, a, a complaint form out front, so if somebody isn't getting service, they can uh, contact me. Uh, we don't get those. We do return the emails and the uh, calls as, as we can. Uh, everyone's busy. We handle 56,000 calls a year uh, with a small force. We're like a little Navy SEAL force, but uh, we do respond. The budget is maintained at the county. People are welcome to go down there and look at it. Uh, it's also online, and the budget committee has it, so that we, it's not like we have to show them where the money's going. They they know it uh, well in advance and such. So it isn't a it's not a big uh, mystical thing out there. Let's have an uh, open round for one minute each, please, starting with you, Sheriff Winters. You're welcome to respond to or comment on anything you've heard so far in the discussion. With, with respect to the helicopter, Oregonian, the Southern Oregonian should be proud that they have that asset, and I'm not going to back off of it one bit. Uh, we spent $445,000 uh, over a three-year period to maintain that air asset. The next closest air asset is four to six uh, hours away. Of the $445,000, all but $95,000 was uh, reimbursed through federal funding streams. When you talk about kids and the uh, abuse, we could put 100 investigators in there, and, and Chief Falls is absolutely right. Uh, we could put 100 investigators and they'd be darn busy. There, there is a big need, but that comes back to the cultural piece that I've been talking about. And that's something we need to change. There's only so many policemen, there's only so much jail space. We need to change the way we do business in America. Deputy Chief, Chief Falls, you have a minute to comment on anything you've heard so far this morning. Problem solving strategies. We, we need to have problem solving strategies with, within our community. We need to work together to uh, solve these problems. I built a strong foundation of doing this and implementing best practices. What I'd like to see from the sheriff sheriff's office is a sheriff's office that is accredited. We, we don't have a sheriff's office that is accredited right now. What this means to you is accreditation is a professional police department that has uh, have the state standards uh, where you have uh, policies and procedures that are being looked at and, and are approved. There's only two agencies in Jackson County that have uh, an accreditation, and that's the city of Medford and the city of Ashland. There's only five sheriff's offices in the state. so. I'd like to bring a higher level of standards to the sheriff's office, and, and with that, uh, a problem-solving uh, philosophy. An open minute for you, Lieutenant Surgeon. Well, oh, a couple of things. Uh, over the last eight years, we actually spent about $1.3 million on the, on the helicopter, um, which averaged about $170,000 a year, I think. Uh, the, the, the people we have working for us they're professional, uh, they, they're dedicated, but, but they're not given the proper training at this point. I think the training is one of the most fundamental things an agency can do for its employees. We're not meeting that, meeting that benchmark. I intend to uh, dedicate as much as the budget to training as possible and not only uh, create some more pre professional 
agency. It reduces liability. It, it uh, builds confidence for the deputies, and they, they're much more competent out on the street. I'm, I'm going to ask you, sorry, a few Lieutenant Surgery, to speak to the accreditation issue. That was one question uh, League members wanted to address. Uh, the department is currently not accredited by Oregon organizations. Um, is, would that be a priority for you? What is your view on accreditation and its importance? Uh, in one minute, please. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a priority only because uh, it, it takes a lot of manpower and intensive work to get accredited. Uh, I was part of Medford when they went through the original Kalia accreditation and it takes a lot of work to do. We don't have the resources to dedicate to that right now. There are other uh, accreditation uh, outfits out there and there's, there's an agency called Lexipol that can professionalize your uh, policy manual. It's up to date, case litigated, uh, and stuff like that certainly is, is uh, doable with, with minimal manpower, but the accreditation part, like I said, it's manpower uh, intensive and my priority would be to get this agency back uh, on the number one goal, and that's law enforcement, and put more uh, deputies on the road. Sheriff Winters, would you address in a minute the issue of accreditation? Yeah, we haven't done it for all the reasons that uh, Lieutenant Sergi just explained. And, uh, you know, we run a, we run a sharp ship. Our uh, liability insurance actually went down, uh, our liability Exposure went down $200,000 this year. We're instituting the uh, Lexapol policies. We run a we run a good ship, and uh, you know we haven't uh, we haven't needed to go that route yet. I'm not saying that it's bad. I think that agencies that, that have the time and the manpower and can invest in it, that's all good. But uh, you know we have a lot of other things in this county that need to be handled prior to that. And uh, you know when we can put it on our plate and do it, do it right. We'll look at it, but until then, we're going to handle the day-to-day uh, -day business it takes to run the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Chief Falls, you actually brought the topic up in your open time. Is there anything more you'd like to say about it? Absolutely. We're, we're not accredited because we have all the time in the world to, to, to uh, look into accreditation. We're accredited because it's important to our community, and it should be important to the, the Sheriff's Office. It does take a lot of uh, work and, and effort. But what that means to the citizen is they're getting a professional police department that has the highest standards of training in the state. We should want that as a community, and it should be a priority. And we can do that with the resources we have, just m making it a priority. So I, I think it's something important. It would be more of a uh, long-term solution than, than something that would be an immediate uh, goal. But uh, that's something that is important. You know when you have somebody show up to uh, your door that uh, they're coming from an agency that has implemented professional standards and, and someone has checked in on them making sure that they're following those. So it's an important thing to have. It should be important to our community. I have a fairly general question about the jail, uh, starting with Sheriff Winters this time. I'd like your general assessment of the quality of jail operations and what, if any, changes in policy or procedure you pursue. I think our uh, I think our staff and our folks that uh, operate the jail do an excellent job. I think, uh, you know, we pass our jail inspections that are conducted at the state level. We're always in the upper uh, 95 percentile in the inspections uh, by the Jail Standards Committee. And we're, getting, we're preparing to open another 64 beds uh, of space, which could get full quickly if not properly managed. But, uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of issues inside the jail. Deputy Chief Falls, your assessment of the operations at the jail and what, if any, specific changes you might make? My observations are, if you look at the county budget last year, one of their significant issues was, was jail staffing and staffing uh, the jail in overtime. It's a significant issue that I didn't bring up, but it's in their budget. Uh, certainly that has to be addressed. You don't want to continually run a, a jail on, on overtime. Uh, that, that's a tough enough environment as, as a jail corrections deputy to work, let alone doing it on overtime all the other thing is, is force releasing four to, five, four to five thousand people every year. We need to be discussing how that impacts our community. And we need to talk about those things and find solutions to see what the impact is. 
it's not impacting our community, then, then maybe it's okay to force release that many people, but I don't think that's the case. So that certainly needs to be a, a discussion when we're talking about the jail and force releases. How does it impact our community and putting the resources to that? Part of jail is, is our mental health situation that we have in Jackson County. Mental health issues are increasing, and a lot of times some of the mental health issues will end up in jail as a, as a default. We need to uh, certainly train our, our employees, our deputies, our police officers, and, and understand the appropriate resources out there for someone who has mental health issues so we're not always uh, taking them to jail, that we are finding other resources for them. So those, those are the, uh, some of the issues I see. Lieutenant Sergi, in two minutes, any observations or comments about the jail and specifically whether you would change any policies or procedures? I, I, for the staffing part, I, I do have a plan uh, to uh, increase at least the staffing per shift. Um, and we'll probably look at a 12-hour shift. Uh, that should reduce the overtime and uh, be able to decrease on, on the, the staff needs to take off. Right now, the, a lot of that overtime is uh, because of the contract, uh, and we have minimum staffing per shift, so they have to, it has to be backfilled by uh, another deputy so someone can take a much needed day off. Uh, so that, that would be one thing I'd look at. Uh, the mental health issue is a serious problem with, with the jail. You know, we are not partnershiping uh, enough with, with uh, other county resources to resolve those issues. I intend to look at that closer. Uh, we have a lot of people housed uh, on, with mental health issues that shouldn't be in jail. Um, Corey's right, uh, they, they end up in our jail on, on minor um, crimes like trespass or disorderly conduct because the, the guy on the street has nowhere else to, to take them. Um, our two north facility is, is constantly filled, so we need other resources to look at, at least to come in to be able to do a mental health evaluation 24-7 and uh, get those people uh, to the right uh, source or resources instead of housing them, help them. And it's, and it's a hardship on the deputies to have to uh, deal with that kind of of uh, inmate uh, 40 hours a week. It, it's, it's something that the deputies uh, are not trained to do and other than just house. Okay, Ed, um, the word partnership has come up a couple times and I'd like to build on that a little. What uh, community partnerships or collaborations could you imagine that you think could serve the interests of better public safety in Jackson County? Uh, Lieutenant, uh, pardon me, I apologize, Deputy Chief Falls, it's your answer first this time. What was your question again, what partnership? The potential partnerships or collaborations with other entities that could serve the interest of public safety in Jackson County? Certainly partnerships with, and we'll stay on this topic a little bit with... I'm sorry, this will be a one minute answer. <laughs> okay, stay on this uh, topic of mental health a little bit, is, our, is crisis intervention training. And certainly the partnership with our, our local mental health and training, uh, training deputies and officers to respond appropriately to, to people with, with mental health. So those, those partnerships with uh, the mental health resources in our county. And then partnerships with uh, other organizations, partnerships with our, our district attorney's office, partnerships with our local law enforcement, uh, partnerships with uh, different cultures and Hispanic communities in, in our valley. Uh, I see partnerships with uh, most of those people, it's going to be important for this community to work together, identify problems, uh, and get the appropriate resources to those problems. Lieutenant Sergi, uh, potential future collaborations or partnerships that would improve public safety in the county? Well, the mental health uh, portion is, is a huge part. Uh, also, senior services, uh, uh, maybe work closer with JDH uh, and, and get those people at least uh, not progressing through the criminal uh, uh, system, criminal uh, judicial, judicial system, and, um, and also partner with more community um, um, 
associations like the, the, the Latino Association and uh, even the Horse Lover Association. There, there, there's outfits out there that uh, there's a lot of issues with large animal neglect that as an agency we, we can do a better job, but the, but the associations like Latinos and um, various agencies throughout the county, we can do a better job of interacting and in partnership with them to, to take advantage of their resources. Sheriff Winters, any comment on potential future collaborations or partnerships that would serve public safety in the county? Well, I, I don't know, uh, I'd have to really look at that because we partner with about everybody in the county. Uh, you know, I, I listened to this piece about how the, we're not partnership with mental health and such, but uh, actually we've hosted uh, mental health seminars and, or seminars on how to work with uh, the mentally ill and how to respond to those in partnership with the mental health at the Smolin Center. We're sending uh, four deputies at a time because we can't send everybody, but we're sending them to uh, crisis intervention training on how we can properly respond and do a good job uh, when we handle that. We manage it in the jail. We have partners with everybody. This agency, it's a big job. This is county line to county line. We respond. We've never turned down, not once, we turned down a law enforcement request to an agency asking for it in Jackson County. Not once. That includes Ashland and all the other cities. We're always there for them. We have a lot of good partnerships and collaborative uh, agreements in place. Okay. I think we're starting with Lieutenant Sergio this time. It's a two-part question that has to do with marijuana, uh, recognizing the limitation on resources that we've discussed before. Where would you, where, what is your priority on investigation and enforcement of uh, cultivation and possession of marijuana laws aside from the medical marijuana issue. That's number one. Number two, do you have any view you'd care to share on the current controversy over medical marijuana dispensaries in the county? <clears throat> well, the illegal marijuana grows, you're talking about the cartel grows, I, I'm assuming, and I would take a, a firm stance against those in Jackson County. They do a lot of damage to our forests and public lands, not only uh, causes erosion, chopping down trees, but uh, dumping chemicals, trash, and then it's unsafe for hikers and hunters uh, to be around that kind of activity. Plus all the, the illegal marijuana grown by the cartels, that money is directly going to the cartel coffers. So that would be a priority, but, but in Jackson County, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sending deputies all over Southern Oregon and Northern California. Uh, we have enough issues in this county uh, to uh, take care of and, and not waste resources outside of it. Do you want to very briefly have any comment on medical marijuana dispensaries? As long as they're in compliance, I have no issue with, um, with medical marijuana dispensaries. And if the community wants to have them or not have them, that's up to the individual communities, and I, I would respect that. Sheriff Winters, uh, two minutes, please, on uh, your priority, where you locate your priority on enforcement and investigation of uh, illegal cultivation and possession of marijuana, and, uh, and your view on medical marijuana dispensaries. Sure. Uh, the lieutenant said a lot of good things. I mean, there's probably no need to duplicate it. I take a strong stance. We have taken a strong stance. Uh, you know, I guess the difference is I'm going to go in a helicopter and he's going to ride a horse, but uh, to get it out of there because this is steep and dangerous country. And when you go in and do these cartel grows, you have to be prepared. Uh, you know, we've been in gun battles out there. Uh, we've had serious issues and you have to have the aviation assets to handle that. This agency has taken off about $1.7 billion of marijuana, uh, marijuana, that's on federal lands that people want to use to hunt and recreate on in Southwest Oregon. And there isn't enough resources. You have to share. Jackson County, we put the pressure on them and we pushed them from here to Josephine County. And then they embedded over there. And if anyone thinks that the, the marijuana that's grown in Josephine County isn't turned to cash, goes to Mexico, turns into heroin and meth, and comes right back into the market of 206,000 people of Jackson County, they're wrong. 
It's grown over there and it's shipped down south, made into drugs, and it comes back into this community. And now, with the lack of law enforcement over there, we're, we have cartel groups and criminal enterprises setting up shop over there and come, trying to come over here and uh, commit crimes and then run back over and hide in Josephine County because they don't think they're going to get followed up on. We're going to go get them, and I'm going to go get them each and every time. I am, I am the sheriff of Jackson County, but it's a regional problem that we're dealing with, and we have to deal with it because this is the population base. This is where the kids are. This is where most of the people are in Southern Oregon. Any comment on medical marijuana dispensaries? I think it needs to be uh, thoroughly researched by uh, you know people that have probably more vision than I do with respect to where it is placed so that it's, when those dispensaries are put in that it's, uh, they're appropriate for the area because it increases traffic, you have other issues and I think that uh, planning and, and commissioners and city council people that have a better knowledge of their city and, and can give a better vision need to place those properly uh, so that the rights of uh, citizens to, you know, have peace and quiet in their home is maintained. You don't have a dispensary in the middle of a residential area, for example. Deputy Chief uh, Falls, we have a, our two-part question where you prioritize and put in, in a resource sense uh, enforcement of marijuana cultivation and possession laws and your views on medical marijuana dispensaries. This is one issue I understand. When I worked in Washington, I, I worked for a county of over 600,000 people, and I was assigned to a, a regional drug task force, and we bordered a county of 1.5 million people. I've been neck deep in the drug issue a lot of my career, and I understand that. When it comes to prioritizing, uh, as, as a sheriff, I, and I said this earlier, I, I really think that uh, we need to curtail and limit the amount of uh, enforcement we do outside of this county, especially when there is uh, a lot of crime against our own citizens here. So I understand the, I understand the marijuana problem, I understand the, the, the drug problem, and when you talk about partnerships, if we do have some of these uh, cartel grows, which we have had in, in Jackson County, then maybe uh, we need to have more resources from uh, the DEA who actually uh, does cartel investigations and we, we force their hands uh, with some of their resources in our county. I certainly think the marijuana issue needs to be addressed with, within our county. But from, from my background of working around uh, large counties with, with regional problems of, of drug enforcement, uh, we, we, we are limited with the resources we have here. And with those resources, as your sheriff, we have to choose whether we're going to send them to other counties or if we're going to make sure that we have enough investigators to handle child abuse cases. That would be more of a priority to me than, than going elsewhere to investigate marijuana. In terms of the dispensaries, uh, I'm going to follow the law. Well, whatever the legislature says is what, we're, is what the, the plan is for dispensaries, uh, that's what we're going to do. The important thing is, is let's, let's talk about how we're going to keep it away from kids, keep it out of communities where uh, children can get their, their hands on the drugs and, and work on that problem. I want to flesh out something that's come up a little bit, and it has to do with assistance to neighboring counties that are in more dire fiscal situations, or at least have cut back their law enforcement resources more. Sheriff, you address that more, and in, in our rotation, you're first now, and you're welcome to say uh, anything more about that, but the question would be, in the next four years, what would your attitude be for uh, requests for assistance and resource assistance from neighboring counties that are uh, not not achieving an adequate level of law enforcement. Yeah, we don't go just handle the day-to-day -day calls. The everything that uh, my opponents are referring to has to do with uh, Mexican cartel operations in Southwest Oregon and Northern California. And no sheriff's office, no sheriff's office has the resources to handle that by themselves. And so we have to partner with our sister counties to keep this, this problem under control. And I'm going to continue those partnerships because I believe it's the right thing to do. When you talk about assets outside of Jackson County, maybe we should talk to Lithia Dodge who lost seven cars off their lot, seven brand new cars, and where did they end up when they were found? They found, were found over in Josephine County. Well, you know, I can't solve everything for everybody, but when it comes to the drug war, uh, I'm going to do the best job I can for the citizens of this community. 
the DEA was referred to, they're almost non-existent. So you're not going to get help from the DEA. You're going to get some, but it's almost non-existent. We're the only thing gluing that together right now. It's the collaborative partnerships that we have with seven southwestern sheriffs and two in Northern California and the Oregon State Police. That's what handles that exterior drug threat that's out in our forests. And the environmental impacts, they're huge. My drug teams just got done cleaning up all those drug sites, every one of them, and, and taking all that fertilizers, pesticides, garbage, and everything, and we cleaned that, we cleaned up our forests, and we hauled it out, and we got rid of it. So we take this seriously, and we do a darn good job at it, and there's nobody else qualified to do it. Deputy Chief Falls, please, your likely attitude or stance, uh, assuming county budgets don't change very much, to requests for uh, support, resource support from other counties. And with, with the pa passing of House Bill 3453, the, the governor uh, actually uh, this passed in 2013 where they allowed uh, emergencies declaring, a f uh, excuse me, counties declaring a fiscal emergency to request uh, assistance from other counties. We will certainly assist other counties if, if it's an immediate public safety issue. I am not going to let another uh, law enforcement agency or, or deputy out there if there's an immediate law enforcement or, or safety issue go without a response. I think what we need to be talking about when it comes to assisting other agencies is it needs to be a, a, more of a community discussion. What, what, what are we going to send our resources to do to, to assist? And uh, anything short of emergency, public safety emergencies, I, I think the, the community certainly has to be involved in those discussions of how much resources that we're going to send to neighboring county, counties uh, for the lack of, of their resources. The uh, Oregon State Police is, when, when you see Josephine County shut down a lot of their services, that doesn't stop all the, the child abuse cases that come in and all the problems that continue to, to come in. And the Oregon State Police is burdened with a lot of that. And that affects our own Children's Advocacy Center here in the county and, and our own district attorney's office. So we certainly need to uh, keep an eye on the downfall of surrounding agencies and ensure that uh, our resources are going to benefit Jackson County citizens. Lieutenant Sergi, uh, your, your attitude as sheriff to neighboring counties who may need assistance like this in the next four years? I would certainly offer mutual aid if, if it's requested and uh, send um, the resources we could, but to uh, Sure, the citizens of Jackson County to do that is not necessary, and it's, and it's not fair to the citizens of this county who pay their share of taxes and support law enforcement in their county. Um, it's, it's an issue when you're the, the lead agency in those investigations and sending enormous amount of resources uh, to Joe County uh, four years, three or four years ago, we had over 25 grows uh, in Joe County. We were the lead agency on most of those. Uh, that's uncalled for. Uh, they need to step up, take care of their issues. If they ask for our help, certainly provide it. Um, as far as the um, keeping the resources here, that, that's a priority. We, we, we don't have the resources to ship those out. When we send that many people outside the county, um, it's a hardship on the, the employees that are left here, they either are working overtime or they have to handle uh, twice as many calls to get through the day. So it's, it's just not fair to, to our employees, our citizens, to send those resources outside the county uh, when there's other agencies that can do that. Um, the DEA, OSP, um, they all have those type of units to combat that and investigate those things, and we shouldn't have to be the lead off, uh, agency uh, during those investigations. Uh, I'm going to need to word this next question uh, slightly differently to, to, you, to you three. Uh, uh, and Deputy Chief Falls, you yeah, have the first cut at this one. For you and Lieutenant Sergi, what is the, your single most serious concern about current operations in the Sheriff's Department? and how would you address that particular issue? Sheriff Winters, I'm gonna ask you, what, what is the uh, 
um, area uh, most in need of improvement in current operations and how you would address that in the next four years. So your most serious concern, Deputy Falls, about current operations? Uh, my most current concern is uh, the force releases of uh, four to 5,000 people a year in, into our uh, community and how it impacts us. So certainly I would want to uh, analyze that and see how it impacts the community and put some problems on the resources to uh, correct that. And Sergio, you're in a minute. Uh, your most serious concern with operations and how you might do things differently? <clears throat> well, it's threefold. Uh, the, the force releases, we, we do need to address that and come to a more effective solution on that. Uh, the jail staff is trying to work that out um, and the results are still pending. Uh, the mental health issue, we need to take care of that and partnership better with other resources. And then the depletion of the patrol uh, staff, we need to uh, add more deputies on patrol. And like having the, the seven cars stolen off of Jackson County lot, that may have been prevented if we had more deputies on the road uh, to catch that type of activity. Uh, Sheriff Winters, what, what area do you think most needs improvement in current operations and how are you, would you address it in the next four years? Well, we'll just, uh, we'll just use my opponent's platform. Uh, with respect to jail releases, you can't answer it in a minute. The subject's substantially more complex. We are addressing it. We are partnershiping with uh, uh, community justice, we work on a plan. The numbers are already down 14% this year. It's going to substantially drop, uh, and I will get those numbers uh, here before the next debate. It's probably even deeper than that that has dropped. The problem was what caused the force releases. We, we have managed those. I inherited some of those. We managed them, but then the courts, we, locked, we uh, lost our release officers out of the judicial release officers out of the courts, and so bodies that were typically getting OR'd at the court level are now finding their way into the uh, jail system. So that's why we had, you saw such a substantial uptick is when they laid off those two positions to, due to lack of funding, that moved that function over into the jail. So we're trying to re, redo that uh, as we speak and you'll see those numbers come down. This is a question from our audience and it goes first to Lieutenant Sergi. Do you see the use of volunteers in the Sheriff's Department as police departments have suggested? Uh, we, we use volunteers. We have a pretty good uh, uh, volunteer core. Search and Rescue is almost all volunteers, and, and we ask a lot of those folks. They're very professional, dedicated, and uh, they spend a lot of time not only training, but going out on rescue missions. Uh, we have traffic volunteers, so uh, we have parking enforcement volunteers, so, so we're currently using volunteers and, and I would continue to, to do that. Maybe I'll add to the question, do you see any expansion opportunities for volunteers? Uh, probably on a limited basis, um, it, it depends on, on the needs, uh, right, but like right now, we're, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, uh, using our volunteers and, and search and rescue takes uh, a lot of that and like I said those people are professional dedicated and they help a lot and all volunteers. Uh, Sheriff Winters do you see any opportunity or need for the expansion of use of volunteers in the department? Yeah I mean we're, we're, we're one of the best agencies at handling that. I mean we have 150 volunteers that work for us in various divisions uh, you know, we do an excellent job. If we can expand it, uh, we will. I think what the person might have been referring to is a model that they're trying to use over in Josephine County where they're having volunteers go out and take, uh, you know, case reports or follow-up. I personally, well, I'm not 100% uh, until I get more information behind that. Uh, you know, I think that has to be done exactly right because there's a whole host of things that go with that on how you're going to prosecute cases and. Uh, evidence and things like that. So it, there are some lines where you have to be careful, and uh, but we we always welcome volunteers and appreciate it. Any comments, Deputy Chief Falls, about the use of volunteers in this department? No, I think the use of volunteers are, are very important, uh, and they both mentioned search and rescue. That that is a great resource for for uh, volunteers. Also. Uh, 
other things, uh, there's CERT teams, community emergency response teams that uh, volunteers are very valuable in. And uh, having, having volunteers to do some of those duties is, is very helpful. And uh, just to reiterate what, what some of the other comments about uh, volunteers being used for, for traffic enforcement uh, during some events, whether it's the fair or whatever the events that you have that you can use extra volunteers. I think they're a valuable resource and uh, should be used. Uh, thank you. And let's, uh, let me see, I think we'll go to Sheriff Winters first on this. Just going to slip this in quickly, an audience question before we go to closing comments. Is the concern is about human trafficking. There actually is a question, but let's ask um, what role, you know, how do you assess that problem going forward and what role do you see your office having in addressing human trafficking? Uh, it's a serious problem and you've got to have resources to deal with it. It's a very complex problem. Uh, you know, we investigate any of the complaints we get. We have a, uh, uh, as long as well as do the other law enforcement agencies, but it's a, it's a bigger problem than this county has resources to address. Okay, uh, Deputy Chief Falls, any comment? Human trafficking uh, also is the problem of, of sexual assault, and there hasn't been a lot of actual human trafficking investigations or cases. There's been one or two in our valley, but certainly our problem of, of sexual assault, and we know that human trafficking is passing through our community. We know it's out there. The important thing when it comes to sexual assault, and, and the, the city of Ashland has really taken a lead nationally on how to, to, how to address this, and, and that's getting victims to report. A lot of times, whether you're involved in human trafficking or you're underage or whatever the barriers are, victims don't want to report. So we've tried to make a model to, to get uh, people to come forward and, and report so we can start identifying uh, serial perpetrators. We can start identifying some of these offenders, the, the pimps that are doing the human trafficking, and, and start taking them down uh, with, with these types of investigations. Lieutenant Sergi on human trafficking. I'm not aware of it being a, a large issue in, in this community. I know it's a, a issue uh, throughout the country. It, it exists. It's something that's uh, very important that we uh, take action if we, we find that type of activity. I, I think the uh, sexual assault uh, investigations are important. Uh, how to handle those properly. More than 20 years ago, we, we went down that road to, uh, to effectively handle uh, the sexual assault cases. Um, what uh, uh, Corey's doing in Ashland is, is, is a takeoff from, from even 20 years ago. It's commendable that they um, uh, advocate that strongly, but it's, it's something that as a law enforcement professional, we've been doing that. Uh, for the last 20 years, it's important to take those victims seriously and to investigate those issues as well as we can. Well, gentlemen, on May 2nd, uh, ballots will be mailed out to every Jackson County voter with your three names on it for the Office of Sheriff. In your last response in two minutes, and we'll be going in reverse order from how we started, I'd like your view on why voters should put their check next to your name, I guess. Darken the Oval next to your name. Sheriff Winters, you have two minutes. I would ask the voters to, uh, would to, to support me. I've done this for uh, three terms. Uh, like I said earlier, the budget has been uh, come in on time, each and every time, underspent to some degree, money returned back to the county. Uh, I've, I've personally worked with, spearheaded, and, and been a part of some of the following things. The Nexar emergency response system that we're uh, putting in a Shady Cove so we can hopefully keep our kids safer when at least tragedies like happened yesterday uh, continue to go on. The traffic team which cut uh, fatalities. We were number two in the state at the time. We, were, we had 45 traffic fatalities in 04 when we started that. We've cut that down to I believe the number runs around 16 to 18. On a yearly basis, we started a SWAT unit so that we could deal with these cartels and, uh, and all the uh, uh, environmental impact and all the issues that come with them out on our, our lands, uh, Forest Service lands. We started a canine unit. We started the Child is Missing uh, program, a community service officer program, a crime reports and civilian search program, a cold case homicide unit, an air rescue unit, which I'm proud of. I won't back off an inch because 
The next closest hoist helicopter that will come down here to save one of our citizens is four to six hours away. It's in Portland, and that's if it's not deployed. So uh, I'm proud of that unit that we started. We consolidated dispatch at the Emergency Communications of Southern Oregon. We have the California Oregon Search and Rescue, which is a nine county search and rescue program. We have the summer program. We have a regional Amber Alert that we wrapped up today to save our, uh, keep our kids and have a good response system to keep our kids safer. Uh, we're part of the MADGE team. We're part of the high tech crime unit. Uh, you know, we're going to open 60 beds here shortly. This, this administration has done a lot. And uh, I'm proud of it. I'm going to stand behind it. Uh, I, I, I have nothing to regret on this. Lieutenant Sergi, in two minutes, why should Jackson County elect you as its next sheriff? Well, because I'm the only candidate with extensive knowledge of, of all divisions within the sheriff's office. Uh, I had the ability to be an effective leader from day one. I know the jail functions. I know the patrol functions. I know the employees. They know me. They, they trust me. I have their respect, and I am the only candidate that, that can make immediate change. Uh, I, I know changes need to be made, and I already have a plan to make those changes from day one. I also have the overwhelming support from the law enforcement community in the county. I'm supported by former Sheriff Bob Kennedy and many other uh, law enforcement uh, officers, both retired and active. I have endorsements from former prosecutors. I have the endorsement from the Fraternal Order of Police, both state and local lodges, uh, and I have the experience and expertise for being the best candidate for the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. I've spent three decades in, in law enforcement, and I know uh, the Sheriff's Office backwards and forwards, and I have a clear and smart priorities, and I know how to make those changes uh, 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 right now and for the better. Deputy Chief Falls, why should Jackson County elect you as its next sheriff? Well, leaders lead, and they look for these types of challenges. Nobody asked me to be here today. I want this challenge, and I want to be your next Jackson County sheriff. The sheriff needs to communicate with the public, and they need to allocate resources to solve problems within our community. And we have a lot of problems. We've talked about a lot of those, those problems today. And as leaders, we need to constantly be asking uh, our, our community, what are we accomplishing with the resources you are giving us? In today's modern law enforcement environment, we also have to ask, how does what we're doing impact the community? Now, you've heard a lot about uh, helicopters and, and equipment and systems and uh, a lot of things that the, the Sheriff's Office has done or, or plans to do. I, I call those, those outputs. We can tell you all day long how much People we, how many people we arrest, uh, how many forced releases we are. But where I want to bring the discussion to is what are the outcomes? What are we doing with the resources that you're, you're giving us? I want to talk about outcomes. Well, how do we get there? I've built a strong foundation in, in law enforcement and law enforcement leadership on problem solving and implementing best practices. So just to give you a little glimpse of, of what I would do as a sheriff, I have a couple of short-term goals. And the first thing we need to do is we need to we need to identify what we're accomplishing. How fast are we getting to your calls when you call the police? Is crime going down? What do, we do? do we have enough uh, detectives to investigate crimes? We need to analyze uh, the, the releases of our jail and, and determine what this is. As your sheriff, I would certainly uh, look at these things. And this information will direct us how to best appropriately use our resources. And those short-term uh, goals will lead to some long-term solutions that I would like to see of a decrease in problems, decrease in crime, adequate jail space for our community, and adequate investigators to investigate the crimes. I appreciate your support. Thank you. I, I mentioned that ballots will be sent out May 2nd on this race and are due back in on May 20th. There's one other date I'd like to emphasize, and that is that April 29th is the deadline for registering the vote, and I hope people really pay heed, heed to that date because there's this and several other very important issues to settle on the ballot. I want to uh, thank the League of Women Voters for providing this forum that offers us all an opportunity to hear directly from the candidates uh, in this kind of way. And I want to very sincerely, would you help me in sincerely uh, thanking our three candidates both for stepping forward for public service.